I welcome you to my another video about tools. Kybeats company that focuses on measurement instruments has contacted me and kindly sent me two multimeters for review. Let's then thank them for uh, we can have a look at something new and gain more experience in the world of measurement tools. These multimeters are Kybeats HT118A and Kybeats KM312A. Kaiweeds have their own e-shop with their own warehouses. For me, uh, they send it from Germany to Czech Republic. Uh, they will even send you invoice in case you wanted it for a company and it comes handy to lower your taxes. Uh, they also offer three years warranty, which is unusual, but great. Cause, for example, if you buy from AliExpress, you have like a month, I believe, and then good luck, it's your problem now. Now to the topic. Kaiweeds HD118A. The multimeter comes in this yellowish box with no additional info. Once we open it, it gets better, as we can see the multimeter we ordered. Alongside with the multimeter, we also get K Temp Probe, two AA zinc carbon batteries, they also come handy, and they are right now in the multimeter. Uh, most multimeters are however shipped without battery, so this is nice thing to have. Uh, test leads are classic 10 amp PVC insulated and uh, the tips are standard and okay for many DIY jobs, but personally I recommend buying sharp needle tips. They are just better in every aspect and they allow you to measure like uh, pins in connectors. For example, the last thing in the box is manual that even shows some basics about how to measure with multimeter. There are even pictures on how to measure with it properly. Uh, this says that the multimeter should survive accidental 250 volts being applied to leads when measuring continuity. That's good to know. The display has 6000 counts, so maximum value it shows is 5999. No, I'm not speaking German, this is the maximum value it shows. Uh, this value is today standard, I would say. Uh, then uh, the fuses uh, are rated 250 volts, but they could be better. We'll talk about this later. Uh, three readings per second is Hmm. Maybe normal nowadays. Uh, question is how fast the integration ADC in there is. We'll get to that later. Uh, three readings are however applied also to the bar graph, which I would like to see rather with separate ADC that would sacrifice precision for higher refresh rate. But this would apply to multimeters with price tag maybe three or more times higher. So no problem here. Basic accuracy is 0.5% for DC voltage, which is again absolutely normal. Personally, I have tested it in range from uh, 5 to 60 volts and real error was within 0.1%. Let's advance. Currents can be measured with 1.2% accuracy, which I measured to stay within 0.2%. That's beautiful. However, uh, I didn't measure milliamps, only amperes. And one more thing to amperes. If you keep measuring higher current for a longer time, uh, the shunt resistor of 5 milliohms can get warmer and temperature drift its resistance. So the accuracy may be worse, but it should definitely stay within 1.2%. If you want to open the multimeter for fuse change, you need to take the rubber protection cover off. And believe me, it is hard to get it done. But after reminding yourself of some swearing words you thought you already forgot, you can get the cover off without any damage. Uh, the inside looks better than average and personally I see nothing done badly. Both milliamps and amps are fused with bigger fuse, 6 by 32 millimeters. In a world full of multimeters that have just one 5 by 20 fuse or even smaller and not changeable fuses, this is nice thing to have, definitely. 6 by 32 fuses can be bought also filled with sand for better safety parameters. Uh, some professional multimeters have even 10 by 38 fuses that have much higher arc 
extinguish capacity. For example, my M probe made in Germany has such fuse, but 6x32 is absolutely enough in this case, and we should be thankful for it. But why do I care? Smaller 5x20 fuses with glass cylinders sometimes conduct even when blown, as the filament material condenses on the glass. Sand fortunately prevents it, and longer fuse prevents it too. Battery compartment is connected through springs, so there are no wires that could be sheared or turn off the PCB. Nicely done. Multimeter fits in hand quite nicely, thanks to this thin waist. Width is 80, respectively 90 mm, and height is 185 mm. It uh, surely looks gigantic, but it's optical trick, as my M Pro or this unbranded multimeters are the same size. And even look at this clump meter. <laughs> this hexagon NCV probe is for non-contact voltage detection. Uh, this window serves for LED work light. That is, fortunately, quite bright as its brightness should be enough for orientation and even for some basic work or reading of some texts. Uh, these are leads holders and here you can put strap. You don't see it, right? And here you can put strap so you can have the multimeter on your neck. This hole serves for screw, so one may put uh, down a wall picture and place this multimeter there instead. Or it can be used for holding your multimeter in place so you have free hands. That's on you. This leg serves as stand uh, with quite nice stability. Definitely more stable than Windows Vista. This line is LED indicator with green or red light. Quite common these days. And the display is dual. First value, second value. And it has also bar graph. Uh, dual display may help you sometimes and bar graph comes handy for values that change quickly. Uh, viewing angles are OK from bottom and OK from sides. Only from top it gets worse. That is logical since you more often look from the bottom than from the top. Uh, four buttons speak for themselves with their labels and I would like to see fifth button with range setting. As this multimeter is slower, it would be nice to have an option to force range. Uh, one more thing, uh, when you turn it on, you can notice this icon uh, that warns you about the auto power off function to preserve battery life. If you want to deactivate it, you need to turn the multimeter on while simultaneously holding the funds button. Now the icon is not present. Holes for banana pins have one neat function. They are illuminated. And if you change physical quantity or more human-like measured parameter, the multimeter brings respective holes you should use. Now for milliamps and now for amps. Definitely neat function for beginners. Now let's spin the Wheel of Fortune over one click and get to voltage measurement. The value stabilizes approximately after 1.3 second from voltage presence. 3, 2, 1, now. 3, 2, 1, now. There are, however, multimeters that need 2 or 3 seconds to integrate, but this multimeter needs 1.3 second, which is quite usual. There are also multimeters that spit out the value within half a second. Uh, after switching to AC, the secondary display begins showing major frequency. And if the measured voltage is above 80 volts, the display is backlit with orange light. Input resistance is 11 mega ohms for volts and 7 mega ohms for millivolts. Continuity test. Uh, its reactions are quite typical for digital 
may be a little on the slower side. Uh, the response time is, however, absolutely acceptable. Uh, sometimes uh, beeping is interrupted by range search, which I have only seen with HD206 series multimeters. The tips have, however, not always perfect contact because of the coating, which is another reason to buy better leads. However, uh, there is nothing to be angry with, since even expensive fluke instruments have sometimes bad tips. Continuity indication shows two levels. Under 30 ohms, indicator light is green, as we can see here, and under 60 ohms it's red. Over 60 ohms it doesn't beep. Checkmate fluke. Temp measurement has a priority for external probe, but also uses internal temp sensor. The main display shows Fahrenheit and secondary shows Celsius. Uh, even though the display segments allow for it, yes, there are segments for it, these can't be swept. So you are trapped with Fahrenheit and need to focus on Celsius. I would like to see this fixed by pressing fans button to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. For microamps and also for milliamps we use milliamps hole. This is for amperes. Rated maximum is 10 amperes. If you exceed this the multimeter starts warning beep and fuse may blow to protect the multimeter. And moreover, uh, if you measure over 1 amp, the display has orange backlight. Last measurement options are voltage detection or non-contact NCV. This is UPS. It detects the UPS from quite a distance. Then there is one more function and it is live detection. What we need is just to connect one wire to the plus and once the tip touches something live, multimeter announces it. These are safety holes so I need to open them first in order to detect the voltage. So now to test it. The display is also orange. I will turn off the lights here so you can see it better. Now it's backlit white and now it's orange. Beautiful. So you know whether the wire is live by beeping, by orange color, by red color and also by live. Please, uh, just one more thing, uh, these, I mean NCV or live, are just for informational purposes and shall not be used for determining whether an object is not live and safe to work on. It's just informative detection that helps with its speed. So, final verdict. Personally, my opinion is that uh, this multimeter is standard for DIY or maybe even light profit duty. It measures everything you would ever need from ordinary multimeter. It may be used for harsh conditions thanks to its rubber. Or for beginner because it illuminates holes you need to plug. If you are interested in buying of this product, direct link to Kaiweed's website with 10% discount is in the video description. That's all for this video. Goodbye and see you in another video.